All right, so today's video, we've got the 2022 ship deployments for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. So let's dive in and take a look. What's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon. If you want to stay up to date with the latest of cruise news, you want to see some cruise vlogs and ship tours of our upcoming cruise on the Mariner of the Seas, make sure you subscribe down below. Anyways, into today's video. So Royal Caribbean's got some really cool itineraries for all of their ships. So today we're going to dive in every single one of Royal Caribbean ships and see what type of cruises they're doing and what ports they're going to be sailing out of. We're going to start with their newest ship, the Wonder of the Seas, and go all the way down to their oldest ship. So, like I said, first on our list, we have Wonder of the Seas, the largest cruise ship in the world, currently under construction over in France at the STX shipyard, the same builder of her sister ships, Harmony and Symphony. She's going to be done around summertime of 2022 and sail out of Hong Kong and Shanghai, China. Next up on our list, we have the brand new Odyssey of the Seas getting ready to set sail this weekend, actually. She's going to take on her first passengers. Next year, she's going to begin the year doing six, seven, and eight night cruises out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The eight nights will be Southern Caribbean cruises down to Curacao and Aruba, which are really cool. During the summer, she's going to do a variety of seven to 11 night Greek Isle cruises from Rome. And as soon as she finishes up her time over in the Greek Isles for the summer, she's going to return to Fort Lauderdale, Florida and resume those six, seven, and eight night cruises as well. Next up on our list, we have the sister to the Odyssey of the Seas, Spectrum of the Seas. She's gonna start out early January doing four and five night cruises from Hong Kong. And then in late January, she's gonna begin sailings three to eight nights from Shanghai, China. Once she moves up to Shanghai for those three and eight night cruises, she's gonna stay there for pretty much the remainder of 2022. So not much going on for Spectrum of the Seas. Next up, we have the current world's largest cruise ship, Symphony of the Seas. She's going to continue her seven-night itineraries from Miami. She's going to do year-round Eastern and Western Caribbean cruises, and every itinerary that I could see on their website went to Coco Cay, so that's pretty sweet. Coco Cay looks amazing. I am so excited to go see that for myself in September on the Mariner. Next up on our list, we have the third Quantum-class ship, the Ovation of the Seas. She's going to begin the year and end the year as well in Sydney, Australia, doing... Th three all the way up to 13 night cruises from there. She's gonna make one sailing from Vancouver to Seattle that will put her on her normal schedule to run seven to eight night cruises from the port of Seattle. There is an eight night itinerary that goes to Vancouver, Sitka, Endicott Arm, Juneau, Skagway, and Ketchikan. And the normal itinerary goes from Juneau, Skagway, Inside Passage, Victoria, and Endicott Arm. On April 10th, there is a 16 night Trans-Pacific Sydney to Hawaii cruise and there's also one pretty much in reverse that is in October. Next up on our list we have the third Oasis class ship Harmony of the Seas. She's going to do seven night Eastern Caribbean cruises from Port Canaveral. All of these go to Coco Cay as well just like Symphony of the Seas did except one of these is doing a six night Western Caribbean in December. This is only one time in December that does not go to Coco. So very interesting on why they're doing one single Western Caribbean cruise, but it's cool. Anthem of the Seas is next on our list. We have her sailing 7 to 11 night cruises to the Bahamas and Caribbean from New Jersey. On May 2nd, she'll make an 11 night transatlantic voyage over to England where she'll spend the summer. There's going to be a two night on May 13th that'll put her on schedule to do 7 all the way up to 14 night cruises from there. On October 17th, there's going to be another transatlantic heading basically in reverse, heading right back to New Jersey. And she's going to resume 7 to 11 night itineraries from New Jersey to finish out the year. Quantum of the Seas is next on our list, the very first Quantum class ship. She's going to begin in Singapore for the cruises to nowhere like she is right now due to COVID. And in May, she is set to sail from Alaska doing Monday to Monday 7 night cruises. And October 3rd, she will begin a several long sailings that will end in Australia, where she's going to finish out the year. She's going to finish out the year in Brisbane, Australia, doing one three-night cruise, and then a series of five ten-night cruises from there to finish out the year. Allure of the Seas is next. She's going to do six, seven, and eight-night cruises from Fort Lauderdale, Eastern and Western Caribbean itineraries. She's going to make a 14-night transatlantic from Fort Lauderdale to Barcelona in April. She's going to spend the summer over in the Mediterranean for seven night cruises from Rome and Barcelona. And then in October, she's going to make another 14 night cruise from Barcelona over to Galveston, Texas, 
where she will be the first Oasis-class ship to be homeboarded in the port of Galveston on the brand new terminal that is being built specifically for Allure. She's going to spend the remainder of 2022 in the port of Galveston. Oasis of the Seas is next. She's going to do three, four, and seven night Bahama cruises and Caribbean cruises from the port of Miami. In May, she's going to move up to Cape Liberty, New Jersey, where Anthem of the Seas is. So basically, once Anthem leaves to go over to Europe for the summer, Oasis is going to move up and take her place over in New Jersey. Once she's there, she's going to do five, seven, and nine night Canada, New England, Bahamas, and Caribbean cruises. And in early November, she's going to return to Miami doing those three, four, and seven night cruises. Independence of the Seas is next on our list, the final of the Freedom Glass ships. She's going to spend the entire year doing two, three, and four night Bahama cruises from Port Canaveral for the first time being ever homeported there, which is pretty cool. Liberty of the Seas is next. She's going to go from January to April. We'll do three and four night cruises from Fort Lauderdale. Basically doing the same thing as Independence, except she's just going to be in a different port, a little bit further south. She's going to spend the months of May all the way through October in Galveston for seven night cruises before Allure arrives. Once Allure arrives in Galveston, she's basically going to move back over to Fort Lauderdale and resume those three and four night cruises from Fort Lauderdale. Freedom of the Seas is next here. She's going to be in Miami doing those Bahama cruises, three and four nights. And then there is a single two-night cruise on February 7th, which is kind of strange. But other than that, she's going to do three and four-night cruises year-round in 2022 from the Port of Miami. Next up, we have the final Voyager class. We have the Mariner of the Seas. We'll do random eight-night cruises scattered throughout the year, going to the Southern Caribbean and others going all the way to Bermuda from Port Canaveral, which is pretty cool. But the majority of the year, she's going to do four- and five-night cruises, visiting places like Coco Cay, Cozumel and Labity, Haiti. Navigator of the Seas is going to be our West Coast ship sailing out of the port of Los Angeles. She's going to spend the entire year over on the West Coast after she arrives in November of 2021. She's going to do a variety of three, four, five, and seven night cruises. The three and four night cruises go to Catalina and Ensenada. Some of the five nights go to Cabo San Lucas and do overnights there, which is really neat. And the seven night itineraries for Navigator go to Cabo San Lucas. Mazatlan, and Puerto Vallarta, which are really great stops. Next up, we have Adventure of the Seas, doing four- and five-night cruises to start out the year in the port of Galveston. On April 29th, she's going to make a 13-night Galveston to New Jersey cruise and spend the summer sailing to Bermuda and the Caribbean from New Jersey as well, alongside Oasis. She's going to start Canada New England cruises in September, and then in late October, she's going to do a 14-night New Jersey all the way back down to Galveston, to finish out the year with four and five night cruises from Galveston. Explorer of the Seas is up next, beginning the year in San Juan for seven night Southern Caribbean cruises. April 24th, she'll make a six night San Juan to Miami and spend the summer over in Miami doing six, seven, and eight night Eastern and Southern Caribbean cruises from Miami throughout the year. And then there is one single nine night cruise that is going to be wrapping up the entire year. It's going to leave on Christmas Eve, so December 24th. And we'll end up returning on January 2nd of 2023. So you're going to get Christmas and New Year's in one cruise, which is pretty neat. Usually cruise lines like to split that up into two different cruises, but that'll be really neat having both in one. Voyager appears to enter service in April of 2022 for some reason. Not sure why she's entering so late, but, but she's going to begin in April doing Northern European cruises. And on September 4th, she's going to make a 14-night Arctic crossing cruise, as they deem it on their site, going from Copenhagen to Boston. Once she arrives in Boston, she's going to make seven-night Canada New England cruises from there. And then on October 30th, she's going to make a seven-night Boston to San Juan cruise and finish out the year with one five-night cruise on December 18th. And then the rest from there are going to be seven-night Southern and Eastern Caribbean cruises from San Juan. Serenade of the Seas is up next. She's going to do a range of five all the way up to 14 night cruises from Sydney, Australia. No sailings in March and April, so maybe there is a dry dock probably before she begins her Alaska sailings. In May, she will begin sailings to Alaska from Vancouver this summer doing seven night round trips. And then September 25th, she will do a Vancouver to LA. And once she arrives in LA on October 2nd, she's going to do a 13 night Panama Canal cruise from LA ending in Tampa, Florida. 
Once she arrives in Tampa, she's going to finish out the year with Seven Night Western and Seven Night Bahamas cruises as well. Seven Night Bahamas cruises seem really interesting. I've never seen something like that before. But those Seven Night Bahama cruises go to Grand Bahama Island, Bimini, Nassau, and Coco Cay. So awesome itineraries. I would love to try that out. Next up, we have Brilliance of the Seas beginning the year in Tampa, Florida with those four and five night cruises. April 25th, she's going to do a 14-night Tampa to Rome cruise. She's going to spend the summer doing those Greek Isle cruises and will return in November and wrap up the year with those four and five and one six-night cruise Thanksgiving week. But she will be ending out the year in Tampa again alongside Serenade with those four and five night cruises from Tampa. Not too often that we see a Radiance class ship over in Miami, but Jewel of the Seas is going to start out the year in Miami doing six and eight night cruises, six night Eastern Caribbean cruises, and eight night Western Caribbean cruises. She's going to do a transatlantic in the month of April from Miami to Amsterdam. She's going to spend the summer doing Iceland and Arctic Circle cruises, which is pretty sweet. August, she's going to do British Isle cruises from Amsterdam. September, she's going to go to the Greek Isles. Late October, she's going to do a transatlantic ending in Port Canaveral. And then she's going to finish out the year in Port Canaveral, which is crazy because not only do we not have a lot of Radiance-class ships in Miami, I can't remember the last time there's been a Radiance-class ship in Port Canaveral. So that's going to be really cool. It's very different than what they're doing with some of the itineraries with these ships. So very neat. But she's going to do a variety of five to eight night cruises to the Bahamas and Caribbean and then one nine night on December 22nd that will return on New Year's Eve. And we have another Radiance class. We have Radiance of the Seas is going to start out in Miami with those five and nine night cruises. She'll do a 13 night Panama Canal followed by a Pacific Coastal Cruise. She's going to spend the summer up in Alaska sailing from Vancouver all the way up to Seward and she's going to sail out of there as well. And what I mean by that is she's going to do seven days from Vancouver up to Seward. And then from there, she's going to go from there seven nights back down to Vancouver, which is really cool. So if you're able to take two weeks off of work and stuff like that, and you have the ability to go for two weeks to Alaska, that is the best way to do it is going this seven days north and then seven days south. Because there are very little, if any, overlaps as far as ports. And you just see so many more places whenever you do that longer cruise. Norwegian Cruise Line does something similar to this on Jewel of the Seas. And if you have the ability, like I said, definitely do one of these because this is the best way to see Alaska. From, it, from what I've been told, this is the best way to see Alaska. All right. And into our last class of ship, we have the Vision class. We have the Old Girls. The Enchantment of the Seas is spending the entire year up in Baltimore and the winter spring season sailing to the Bahamas in Perfect Day Coco Cay, and she'll do the summer in Bermuda. In the fall, she'll do Canada and New England cruises and then, of course, wrap up the year in the Bahamas. All these cruises will range from five nights all the way up to 12 night cruises. Rhapsody of the Seas begins the year with seven night cruises, Western Caribbean from Tampa. In May, she's going to head over to Rome for the summer doing Greek Isle cruises. In September, she's going to continue those Greek Isle cruises, but she's going to shift over to Haifa, Israel. That's where Odyssey of the Seas was supposed to sail from, if you're looking for a reference there. November 8th, she's going to go from Barcelona to Barbados and then wrap up the year doing those Caribbean cruises. There's one sailing on December 14th that is a 14-night round-trip Barbados cruise labeled the Ultimate Caribbean Cruise, which sounds really, really cool. That cruise is going to go from Barbados, sail to Granada, Curaçao, Costa Rica, Cologne, Panama, Cartagena, Bonaire, Aruba, Trinidad, and return to Barbados. That sounds amazing. I would love to do something like that. Next up on our list, we have Vision of the Sea. She's going to start out the year doing those long Southern Caribbean sailings from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, visiting, like I said, visiting the Southern Caribbean. And then in late April, she's going to make a 14-night transatlantic cruise from Fort Lauderdale to Barcelona. She's going to spend the whole summer over in the Mediterranean sailing from Barcelona, doing a range from 5 to 12-night cruises. And then in early November, she's going to make a 12-night transatlantic, returning right back to Fort Lauderdale where she was. And when she gets back to Fort Lauderdale, she's going to resume those long 9 to 11-night cruises from Fort Lauderdale. Last year's video where we did the 2021 deployment videos, I did mention that Grandeur of the Seas would be leaving the fleet this year. 
And that was still true, but the cruise line that she was sold to, of course, Pullmentor, if some of you didn't know, uh, due to all the shutdowns, Pullmentor did have to file bankruptcy. Grandeur of the Seas had not been handed over to Pullmentor quite yet, so Royal Caribbean decided to keep Grandeur instead of, you know, selling her off to somebody else or scrapping the ship. So a little more life left in the Royal Caribbean fleet for Grandeur of the Seas. Very great to see that. She's the last one on our list, though. She's going to begin the year doing a series of seven night sailings from Barbados, and then that one four. And then she also has that one long 14 night cruise similar to Rhapsody. In May, she's going to head up to Galveston for four and five night cruises. And then in November, she's going to reposition over to Miami and finish out the year with those five to nine night cruises. So that's going to be all for today's video. That is every single Royal Caribbean ship sailing next year. Let me know which ones you are most excited to sail on. Are you booked on any of these cruises? Let me know down in the comments below. And like I said in the beginning, if you want to follow along these ship deployment videos, we have already done Carnival Cruise Line and Norwegian. Next up, we're going to do Celebrity, Disney Cruise Line, and MSC in the near future. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest cruise news, or if you want to follow along our video series coming up very soon on Mariner of the Seas, if you want to see some vlogs from that cruise, or if you want to see some ship tours, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified every time we upload a new video. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments which one you are most excited for. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.